So grateful to have you with us. I'm hoping that you're about to enjoy these next few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Lock in, maybe call a friend, tell them you need to be watching. Why? Because we're about to open up the Word of God. And whenever the Word of God is opened up, the potential for tomorrow to change is always much greater than today. The Word of God can show you a tomorrow so amazing that it'll make you walk out of the doldrums and the hurts of yesterday. I want you to take this journey with me every time we're here. Would you go now? God bless you. I'll see you in just a minute. The Bible says in Jude verse 6, those that did not keep their proper abode, and we know Satan failed, he rebelled against God, and the Bible says a third of heaven with him. So we think that's between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2. The Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and earth. Then the next verse says, but the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Most theologians think something happened right there. Don't know if it's true, but a lot of people a lot smarter than me think right there something cataclysmic happened in the heavenlies, and that was the fall of Satan. The, most people think Satan is in hell. The Bible teaches us that hell is a place of confinement and punishment that is not occupied yet. In fact, Revelation 19 says hell is reserved. It's being kept. Okay? I'm giving you straight Bible. It's a straight Bible, okay? Stay with me saying, where's he going? I thought he was going to talk about faith. He's up there talking about the devil. Just hold on. Okay? The Bible says that they did not, the angels that did not keep their proper abode, he has reserved under darkness with everlasting chains. It means they can't get out of this place. Reserve, same word for reservation. An Indian reservation will be an analogy where there is a boundary. It is a geographic location given to a specific entity, a specific people, and within those boundaries, all the rules are different. They can do things you can't do. They can run a casino, but you need to go try to run one, see what happens to you. <laughs> Okay, because they are on the reservation. The demons are not in hell. Satan is not in hell. They are reserved under darkness. In the Bible, darkness always refers to ignorance. Darkness is not the absence of a light bulb. It means you don't have knowledge on something. In the Bible, light means knowledge. 1 Peter 1, 23. For you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people to show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called you out of ignorance and he wants you to know. You can't be a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people if you're still ignorant. Ignorant is not the same as stupid. Somebody calls you stupid, you got the right to be offended. Stupid means the inability to learn. Ignorant means you just don't know. There's a lot of things I'm ignorant of that don't offend me. Okay? My son came in and they had a new universal remote where they're trying to take all the things we got in our house and kind of unify it instead of 75 remotes laying around like they did 15 years ago. And he had to sit there and work with me and work with me. I am not technically inclined. And he worked with me. Why is that? Because I was ignorant of how that thing operates. That doesn't offend me. I just don't know. So I have to learn. God has called you out of ignorance into light. Why? Because those that did not keep their proper abode, God built a reservation, a geographical boundary. And he gave them the territory called darkness. Satan has God-given permission to operate in what you do not know. What power does he have? The power to flow through your ignorance. 
the power to flow through my ignorance. See, now that cast a whole new light on the Word of God. We were taught religiously, you know, you need to memorize verses and, and try to do this before you go to sleep. And we used to have sun, something called Sunday school when I was a kid. And whoever memorized the most scriptures got a, you know, a dollar or got a lollipop or something. And the fact is, I just thought it was something you do if you're a Christian. But I realized I've been called out of ignorance and I've been called into light. And God has given me 66 beams of light to, to, to be able to draw from. Why? Because whatever I don't know, the enemy is lethal. So if you get told by a doctor, this is not going to change, it looks terminal, and we have nothing else which to treat you with. Now, if you don't know anything about healing, then you are vulnerable. But when you can walk out of the doctor's office and say, no, sir, healing is the children's bread. And he sent his word just to heal my disease. And by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Come on, sir. And none of the afflictions of the world shall come upon me. Come on, Exodus 20. And not only that, but the Bible says, no sickness shall come now my dwelling place. And what do you do? You take the darkness and you hit it with light. Because darkness can't run out the light. But light can always scatter the darkness. Hallelujah. You've been called out of ignorance into knowledge. God wants you to know. Tell your neighbor, God wants you to know. Ah. Man, this is good. Even if I am preaching it myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now, in this darkness, in this ignorance, he is very structured. Principalities, powers, rulers, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, not in hell. <laughs> in heavenly places. That word principalities means beginning. That means the most local authorities. Powers means delegated authority. These have charge over larger areas. You get all the way to spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Then you have like governors and you have like princes over regions. I can tell you, having preached all over America, I can walk into a city and feel what's going on. <laughs> and what goes on in New York is different than what goes on in the Silicon Valley. And what goes on in Silicon Valley is different than what goes on in the South. What's different in the South is different from what goes on in the Midwest because everyone has different spirits that govern those areas. When you get around coastal regions, whoo, coastal regions are different than anywhere else in America. Everything goes in coastal regions. It's amazing what can happen along water. <laughs> Everything changes. That didn't just happen. There is a very structured, and you will never see them break rank. You read all 66 books of the Bible, you'll never see a demon fighting a demon. You'll never see a demon questioning Satan. You'll never see a devil fight a devil. You got to go to church to see that. <laughs> we got 5,000 denominations of the Christian faith because we can't get unified. <laughs> we got people that won't go to this kind of church or that kind of church because they only want to go to this kind of church. And we're so factioned and we're so broken. And the Bible says a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. And the reason we get our behinds kicked again is because we're at war with our own brother and our own sister while the demons in the heavenlies will not break rank under any circumstance whatsoever. I'm going to tell you something. Evil sticks together. It's time that the church did. Come on, somebody. Can I go deeper? <laughs> Luke 10, 17 through 19. The 70, Jesus sent out 70 like he did his 12, and they returned saying, Lord, even demons are subject to us in your name. Whew. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning. 
He said, y'all think this is a big deal that you can make a demon submit. He said, this should be the way it is all the time. He said, I remember back at Genesis 1-1, there was, there was this little fight, and I was like, <laughs> it's over. He said he felt like a lightning bolt. Some of you got, you know, you know Rocky Four going on, the devil and God. But Jesus said, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> there was a rebellion, and God dealt with it very quickly. You got to understand something. God has no enemies. Satan is not God's enemy. The Bible says your adversary, the devil, roams around to and fro seeking whom he may devour. God doesn't have any enemies because there's no worthy opponent. But we have an enemy. Am I preaching? Good. I'm going to run out there to that lounge and buy my own CD. And I'm going to take myself out to eat. (laughs) Uh, behold I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions you're not talking about reptiles he's talking about those are analogies for demonic powers he said they just came back and said we can cast demons out when we say the name of Jesus he said I saw Satan and fall like lightning he said let me tell you something I give you authority to trample on every last one of them principalities powers rulers spiritual wickedness and you have all, all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you Now, if God gave you all authority, how much authority did he give Satan? If he gave you all, then he has, it starts with an N, none. (laughs) You have all of it, he has none. So why are you running from things that can't hurt you? It's about a relationship with Jesus where you put your faith in him, and then that faith becomes so real on the inside of you that out of your desire to walk with God and please God, you live out the principles of the Word, and then that distinguishes you because the blessing of the Lord is on you. Recently, it seems there continue to be variant after variant after variant. But now, Ron Carpenter introduces the latest new type of variant. It's called a breakout of faith. Faith is something that is lived out and expressed in your everyday life. And I want it to be not because of what I say, but because what I do and the way I treat people and doing right by people and being honest. Come on, somebody. This is how you live out your faith. We are not of the world. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Hey again, you know what? We're going to get back to that great word in just a minute. I hope you're enjoying it, but I always stop right in the middle to offer just a word of thanks. Uh, I want to tell each and every one who's just viewing right now, thank you. Uh, You certainly in the day of what, 1,100 cable channels and a phone that attaches to the internet in your hand, you have options. And the fact that you're here watching right now, I'm so grateful and I don't take it for granted. Number two, to thank those people who have supported and allowed us to be on here. We are viewer supported, listener supported. We didn't show any commercials. We didn't sell any ads. You didn't have to watch anything come out and you didn't see Coca-Cola or Bar- You didn't see it. We didn't do anything because we believe in God's people that when they know the message is being preached, that that cause is the greatest cause in the world and they want it to go as far as it can and reach as many people as it can. And that's what we here at Ron Carpenter Ministries are endeavoring to do. You've been with us on a long journey, many of you since 98, some of you for a few weeks, but maybe you've been blessed and you've never given. Would you consider making this program do what it does? Whether it's a one-time gift or you want to become a monthly partner, this is the gift we'll send you to say thank you for partnering with us. We hope that this partnership is a blessing, and I hope that every time you turn on this TV and you see 
this program. I hope that it impacts your life in a positive way. Now, let's get back to the Word. So Jesus said, take heed that the light, the information... And which, which is in you is not darkness. Make sure you don't believe the wrong thing. <laughs> he goes on to say later, he said, because if, if the light you have is darkness, he said, then how great is the darkness? He said, in other words, you are held captive by what you have believed to be true. <laughs> now, can I meddle? <laughs> Permission to offend. Okay, y'all didn't give me none. I need some permission to, permission to offend, okay? <laughs> we live in a non-offense world, but I'm gonna tell you, the Word of God will shake you up sometime. Amen. Can I tell you something about offense? Offense is your friend. Because God will offend you to move you. You're on a journey. And if God wants you to go from B to C and you've fallen in love with B, you know what God's gotta do? He's gotta offend you about B. Because until he makes you hate B, you'll never pursue C. <laughs> Offense is your friend. I didn't get no class. I'm going to go back to my message. <laughs> okay? If your whole body then is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light. When the bright shining of the lamp gives you light. I'll stop right there because that, that goes down another road and I don't have time to go down it. <clears throat> Make sure the light in you be not darkness. And if it is, how great is the darkness? Okay? Here's where I need to get in your stuff. Everything grandmama taught you ain't true. There's something called the law of first truth. In other words, this law says the first things you learned are the most difficult to unlearn. <laughs> Everything your mom and daddy taught you is not true. Everything the college you went to. Everything those professors said, I don't care if they got more degrees than a thermometer. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> Everything you hear on your news outlets. And Jesus said, make sure you're not believing lies. Why? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Are you starting to see the enemy's power? Jesus made this statement right before he was crucified and he knew he was going back to heaven. Jesus made this statement. I'm going. I'm going to come back. Until then, occupy till I come. All of my blessings are in heavenly places, the Bible said. He's finished. He's done it all. Occupy them till he comes. Our warfare is not to win. Jesus has won. Our warfare is to occupy. You, you got 66 books of promises. And the enemy has lied to you about something that will keep you out. And so he's given you the truth. So you can go in and occupy what he's already won for you. Let me give you some. I need, help me understand that. Okay. Don't want to get political. Don't care what side of the fence you're on. The war in Iraq. In three days... We had taken downtown Baghdad and pulled down Saddam Hussein's statue in three days, but we were there for 10 years. Why? We had won, but we were there 10 years trying to occupy with a democratic form of government and failed. <laughs> 10 years occupying, three years victory. I mean, three days victory. Moses, Moses saw a burning bush. Moses is a fugitive. 
He's been running from the law 40 years. He killed a man in Egypt and been running for his life. He sees a bush. The Bible says it's burning and it's not consumed. Take off your sandals. The place you're on is holy ground. He comes to the bush. This is what God says. I have given you. It's already done. A land that flows with milk and honey. He's standing there barefooted running from the law. I have given you a land that flows with milk and honey. But what took 40 years? God said, I've already won the battle. It's already yours. And they wandered for 40 years trying to occupy. Jesus has already won. But we've got a lot to occupy. We do that till he comes. Can I finish? Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not walking around with people in bodies. But they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is not a demon. It's what a demon does. A stronghold is when you believe a lie to be true. Remember, Jesus said, make sure that what you believe is not darkness, because if so, how great is it? And whatever a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. All the enemy's got to do is get you thinking it. Oh, let me tell you. Go back to verse 8. Go back to John 8. Go back to John 8. Put that one up there. I got to read that. Jesus is talking to church people. Look what he says. You are of your father, the devil. He said, and the desires of your father you won't. You don't even know it. He says, you're listening to him and you want the same things he wants. He said, he was a murderer from the beginning. He does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own reason. He speaks out of what he is. He, for he is a liar and he's the father of it. So a stronghold is when the enemy shoots a lie through your head. And if you camp out with that lie and embrace it as a part of your belief system and you think it's true, then it won't be long after you believe a lie, you start living it. So you say something like this, ah, oh, our family's never going to get ahead. It's just not in the cards for our family to prosper, okay? You know what's on the way? Struggle. Because you've embraced that to be true when God said you were blessed. So God calls you blessed, but you didn't embrace that. You've embraced the fact that you're supposed to go hand to mouth for the rest of your life. And so that becomes your reality. Why? Because he lied to you and you believed it. Now it's a stronghold. Nobody loves me. That's a lie. For God so loved. But we say these things and they don't understand why we live as people with no value and no worth. And no purpose. It's because we've embraced a lie from the father of lies. The enemy does not have any power over you but to get you to believe something that is not true. That's it. He operates in ignorance. He operates in darkness. That is the place where he does all of his dirty deeds. I had a pastor tell me one time, said, Jesus don't heal no more. We don't talk about that in our church. And I said, and guess what you'll never see? You don't have to worry about a healing breakout. You'll never see one. Because as a man thinketh, so he will be, and, and sadly, so your whole congregation will experience. <laughs> because you've embraced a lie to be true. <laughs> Might be some ladies in here, and you're like, you know what, what I've been through, and I've been so abused, and I've been used, and I've been molested. You know what, I just... I, I'm just, I don't feel like I have any value, any worth. My self-esteem is crushed. And you don't understand why you attract every bum. I mean, like a bum magnet. You know why? Not because of your looks, but because of what you believe about yourself. Because that is not what God said. That is a lie. So back to 2 Corinthians 10. I got to finish this up. Casting down arguments. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity. In other words, I'm up here right now telling people, I'm doing the offering and I'm telling you the blessing of God. 
Well, there's something in you arguing with that the whole time I'm talking. He said, that's the thing you've got to cast down. I'm up here telling you God wants to bless you, and you say, our whole family's under a curse. So it's all right. So what do I have to do? Because the, thing, the information I have is exalting, exalting. What did Satan do in heaven? He exalted himself. So that thing that you believe is exalting itself against the knowledge of God. So whenever I tell you what God said, it has an argument. And the argument's in your head. It's because of what you've already been taught that wasn't true and what you've believed about yourself. <laughs> and so as a man thinketh, so is he. So the father of lies knows, all he, knows that all he has to do is get you to believe it. Before we go, I just want to ask you, have you ever accepted Jesus Christ into your heart to be your personal Lord and Savior? It's not about church. It's not about a code of conduct. It's not about a religion. It's not even about a belief system. It's about a person, a person who came as the Son of God to pay a horrible price to purchase our salvation, who wants to live on the inside of you, live on the inside of me, be our personal Lord and Savior, and be there every time you call on His name and you never have another day alone and never fight another battle alone. That's the Jesus I offer you. What does it cost me, Pastor? It's free. It's the gift of grace. If you would like to know Him, the prayer goes something like this, Lord Jesus, I believe you died and rose again for my salvation. I ask you to come into my heart and into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to wash me of my sins. I'm sorry. I ask your forgiveness. I accept your gift of salvation and thank you from this moment forward that I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. It just happened. And I got a big smile on my face because I know the journey that just started for you. Amen. Please write in, let us know. Please call in, let us know. Write a letter, let us know. Email us, let us know. But we don't want you to make this decision alone. Please tell us. Ah, oh, we're so excited for you. Until next time, God bless. It's about a relationship with Jesus where you put your faith in Him and then that faith becomes so real on the inside of you that out of your desire to walk with God and please God, you live out the principles of the Word, and then that distinguishes you because the blessing of the Lord is on you. Recently, it seems there continue to be variant after variant after variant. But now, Ron Carpenter introduces the latest new type of variant. It's called a breakout of faith. Faith is something that is lived out and expressed in your everyday life. And I want it to be not because of what I say, but because what I do and the way I treat people and doing right by people and being honest. Come on, somebody. This is how you live out your faith. We are not of the world. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Thank you.